In this clip, we'll look at the classic problem, the ladder standing against the wall. By the end of the video, you should be able to apply sum of forces and sum of torque to be able to calculate unknown forces for an object in a rotational equilibrium. And we will look at the ladder as an example of this. Let's set up the problem. We have a 3 meter long ladder that makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. And if we can neglect the friction with the wall, the question is what minimum coefficient of static friction is required to keep the ladder in place, so to prevent it from sliding. Whenever you approach this kind of problem, the first thing to do is to identify the object in question. So what object do you want to study in here? I guess that just by the title of the problem, you probably guess that what object we're interested in is actually the ladder. Once you have that, the next thing is to be able to identify all the forces that are acting on your ladder and then to draw a free body diagram. So let's start by identifying all the forces in here. I strongly encourage you to draw a box around the object of interest, so in here, the ladder, and look for all the places where this object is in contact with the outside world. In here, it's in contact with the wall here and also at the bottom in here. So when we want to identify the forces, okay, at the bottom we know we have a normal force, I'll call this M from, let's say, the floor, okay, and we have also here a friction force. Now the direction of the friction force, the force here needs to prevent the slipping. So we know that if the ladder falls, it will be, the bottom hand will be moving to the right, therefore the friction force will be pointing left. If ever you are wrong about this, it's not the end of the world, you just get some extra negative sign in the end. At the top, we have also a normal force, I'll call this one NW for the normal with the wall. And we could also have friction, but in here, in the question, it says neglect the friction with the wall. If we did not do this, we would be in trouble because there would be too many unknowns. And then we're missing one force, which is the force due to gravity. We know it will be pointing straight down, and since it's applied at the center of gravity, center gravity of the ladder, we assume that it will be right in the middle, so we'll have Fg just in here. And that's it. These are all the forces that we're dealing. So we can recopy all of this in some form of free body diagram. In here, the forces, where they are applied is important, so you have to make sure that you keep track of the point of application of the forces. So we'll have NW at the bottom and floor here at the bottom. We have the force of static friction pointing this way. And finally we have FG that is acting from the middle of the ladder and that is pointing downward. Okay, and these are all, all the forces that we're dealing with. The next step will be to find or to apply Newton's first law just give myself a bit more space. So if I want to apply Newton's first law here, the one, the force, the, the version of it that you're familiar with is the sum of force version. So we could ask for the sum of force in x to be equal to zero. And you can see in here that this will tell us that the normal force from the wall minus the force of friction at the ground will just be equal to zero. In other words, we know right away that the normal from the wall will be equal to fs. However, both of these are unknown, so we're not going very far with this. Next equation that I'm sure you'll try will be sum of force in the y-axis is equal to zero, and this tells us that the normal from the floor minus fg will be equal to zero. That's a little bit more interesting. So we get from this that normal from the floor is just equal to fg in this scenario. So we could calculate it assuming we had the mass of the ladder, which we don't, but we know it will be equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. This will come in ND later. But you can see that just with these two equations, we actually cannot get an answer. We need to find a third equation that could help us out. And that third equation will come from the sum of torque. Okay, we want that the sum of torque will be equal to zero so that we're sure that there is no rotational motion in the problem. As always, when we try to find the sum of torque, we first need to choose on the pivot. Here there are two obvious choices for the pivot, either at the top or at the bottom, so that you will get rid of some of the unknowns. So in here, let's pick a point at the bottom to be our pivot, I'll call it A, 
so sum of torque around A will be equal to zero. And now we need to calculate the contribution from each of the forces that are applied in here. Okay. And we can see right away that the normal from the floor will not contribute, nor will FS, because they are acting right at the pivot. So there is no lever arm in here. They do not contribute to the torque. So we're left just with NW. So I'll write, basically, we can try to find the lever arm for this. So I'll write N perpendicular from the wall times the normal of the wall. And this one is trying to rotate everything clockwise. So I'll put my negative sign in front. And then and there's FG that is trying to rotate the ladder counterclockwise, so plus an R perpendicular FG. I know it's a lot of subscript, times FG itself. So our goal now will be to find this R perpendicular W and R perpendicular FG. Let me just copy these things up to a new slide so that we have a bit more room. There we go. So we still have our sum of force equation here, sum of torque. And I want to focus on finding the lever arm in both these cases. So we have our ladder in here. The pivot A is at the bottom. And I want to start with the force NW. So we have the normal force at the wall that is in here. And I want to find the lever arm of that force with respect to the pivot at A. So the first thing to do is to extend the force into its line of action. Here I extend it forward because that's the direction of the pivot. And then my lever arm will be this length in here. Okay, so I have in here just my R perpendicular W. I could find it using an angle of 30 degree that is in here, and that would work out, but actually I will prefer to use it by forming a triangle by using this 60 degree angle at the top. Okay, you probably remember this from high school. This angle is 60, then if these two lines are parallel, this one is also 60. So if I redraw my triangle in here, it will essentially look like this. Sorry for the curvy lines. But we have the length of the ladder in here. That's the hypotenuse. I'm looking for R perpendicular W. And I know that this angle in here is 60 degrees. So this means that my R perpendicular W just be equal to the length of the ladder times the sine of 60 degrees. I can do the same thing for FG. So for FG now, we will start from the middle of the ladder. Now FG is shooting straight down. And once again, line of action. So I extend this. And my lever arm in this case is just this length here. And I will call this R perpendicular. FG. Once again, let's try to draw a triangle to help us out. So we will have a triangle that looks like this. The angle, again, 60 degrees. The hypotenuse is the length of the ladder divided by 2, because it's only applied at half the point, and the R perpendicular FG is here at the bottom. So we get that F R perpendicular of the force due to gravity is equal to L over 2, times the cosine this time of 60 degrees. So I can get all that information back in my equation here. And you can see that a lot of stuff will actually simplify. So we'll get 0 is equal to minus L times the sine of 60 degrees times NW plus L over 2 times cosine of 60 degrees times mass times acceleration due to gravity, just replacing the value of g. From this I can isolate for mw. So I will take this one on the other side. Before I do this though, you can see that the l in here will cancel out with this one. So what we'll have is just mw sine of 60 is, is equal to 1 half cosine of 60 degrees times mg. And I can bring the sine 60 on the other side. So I'll get that the normal force of the wall is equal to 1 half cosine of 60 degrees divided by the sine of 60 degrees times mg. And we can rewrite this as 1 over 2 tangent of 60 degrees times mg by using the fact in here, okay, so here I'm using the, 
definition that tangent of an angle is the same as the sine of that angle divided by the cosine of that angle. At this stage, remember that what we're looking for is the minimum coefficient of friction. So now we have the normal at the wall, but we know from this equation that it's the same thing as the force of friction. So we know that essentially this will also be equal to Fs. So that's the force of friction. Now let's uh, try to figure out what will be the coefficient of friction. So from the previous slide, we have that the static friction in this case will be equal to 1 over 2 tangent 60 times mg. But we also had found from the sum of force on the y-axis that n floor will be equal to mg. And here we want to have the minimum value of mu s possible, which means that we are actually looking for the maximum value for the static friction when it can give everything it gets. So fs max we know is equal to mu s times the normal. So fs max will just be given like this. So we are looking now for mu s. So mu s will be equal to fs max divided by the normal. And in this case, this gives us 1 over 2 tangent 60 degrees times mg. All of that divided by mg. So the mg will cancel out to we'll simplify. And we'll be left with mu s is equal to 1 over 2 tangent of 60 degrees and you can find do the math and you will get a minimum value for the coefficient of friction of 0 0.29 so this is the answer we are looking for but actually this equation here is much more interesting because it tells us what's going on as the angle changes Okay, so one thing that is important when you finish a problem is to try to assess whether your answer makes sense or not. So in here we can do so by going back to this equation. If we say that mu s is equal to 1 over 2 times the tangent of the angle that the ladder makes with the horizontal. Well, if the angle is pretty big, okay, like close to 90 degrees, we expect that we will need a small amount of friction. That makes sense because the tangent function as we approach 90 degree will reach a bigger value. So this means that mu s will be smaller. As the angle gets closer and closer to 0 degrees, tangent theta will get smaller as well. And this, therefore we will need a mu s that will be greater because if the tangent is smaller, 1 over the tangent will be a bigger number. So the mu s will be required will be bigger. So that does make sense with real life so it can be pretty confident that this equation is valid. Another small interesting thing is that the final answer does not depend neither on the length of the ladder nor on the mass of the ladder, as long as it's homogeneous in the sense that it's uniformly shaped, then the only thing that will be important is the actual angle that we are using between the ladder and the horizontal. That completes this clip about the ladder that is standing against the wall. Thanks.